What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the ugliest and worst ideas and just overall worst WWE... WWE action figures that I have ever seen in my entire life. Some of you, some of these you're probably familiar with, guys. You've probably seen them on the shelves at Walmart, actually. At least one of the series, I know for a fact, or two of the series. We'll get into that. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, just dive right in, guys. Let's start off with this series right here. And it's probably the worst ever. I want, I want to get the worst ever out of the way, okay? This right here, the Maximum Sweat WWF action figures, okay? The Maximum Sweat. Yes, the Maximum sweat. Tell me this right here. Haven't you ever been pick fetting or playing around with your WWE action figures? You're just having a five-star freaking classic with your action figures. And the only thing missing, the only problem between these two figures is like, where's the sweat, bro? Why isn't why isn't my, my Kofi Kingston figure sweating everywhere? Why isn't John Cena just sweating profusely in this epic classic with Batista? Well, Brad, I'll tell you why it's not sweating and First of all, that's just gross, okay? Why would I want my action figure to sweat? It says maximum detail, maximum attitude, maximum sweat. Because I gotta say, the only detail we're missing from our Mattel Elite figures is the sweat, guys. I mean, am I right or am I right? This is absolutely the worst thing I've ever seen, and I actually owned a couple of these in my lifetime. This one right here is the Big Boss Man. This is the one, one of the ones that I did own. I also owned the Undertaker one, and I think I also owned the Stone Cold Steve Austin one. There was a few different Stone Cold Steve Austin ones, but I did own those three, and I remember just, as a kid, I didn't really think about it. You know, I wasn't like, you know, this is so stupid, but as a collector now, looking back, I'm like, why in the hell did we get this product on the shelves? But at the same time, you got to think about the times, man. I mean, in this time, uh, you know, WWF was was super popular, and it was it was boom period. It was the boom period for them, and, and, you know, it was expanding and everything, and they were probably just, like, I mean, out of ideas and just trying to throw stuff around and just pumping out stuff left and right, and here we go. I mean, this is what you get, and, you know, Maximum Sweat. It came with a little sweat bottle, you guys can see, and every figure had its own accessory, including Kane, whose mask was removable, and at the time, we did not know what Kane looked like under the mask. So you take the mask off, and this is what you get. Well, by God, if that's not an instant buy right there. So how these figures work, guys, is pretty much you would take your little sweat bottle, you would pour the sweat into the back of the figure, and then you'd press the button as you played with it, and then it would literally leak out little water peblets, little water droplets all over the figure, and that is how it worked. But these figures had to go on the list, guys. I had to include these. They look absolutely... I mean, they're, they're fantastic when you think about it. I mean, this this is totally mind-blowing to look at, is these Maximum Sweat figures. But, uh, yeah, guys, I mean, they were way they were way oversized. I mean, they, they were gigantic compared up to a basic or elite figure. I need to get a couple of these just to have on the shelf for, for just shits and giggles, to be honest with you. But I had to include them here, and, uh, you know, I had to show these off. If you guys have never heard of these, you need to look them up, and you need to, uh, you need to get a few, man. F it. Next up, guys, we are going to talk about a series that is WCW, but, you know, WWE bought WCW, so technically it's WWE figures, guys. This is the WCW Ring Masters action figures, and these were very interesting, awful, and hilarious, all wrapped up in one, sort of like the max Maximum Sweat figures, and it's just pretty much a play on the gimmicks of the wrestlers themselves. You guys can see here, Brett the Hitman Hart, right? I mean, you get it, Brett the Hitman Hart, right? Because he's an actual hitman. He's got the trench coat. He's got a Tommy gun. He's got a, you know, he's a wrestler, a professional wrestler. He comes with a machine gun, guys, so he can gun down every opponent that he steps in the ring with. But these were very interesting, guys. I mean, it was so funny because you had guys like, you had guys like Hollywood Hogan, as you can see here, and it's Hollywood Hogan, guys. He comes with a movie camera. You get it? Hollywood. He makes movies, guys. He, he, he's a movie star. Hollywood Hogan. So, that was the whole point of him. It would kind of be like, I don't know, um, I, I'm trying to think of somebody, you know, nowadays that, you know, you could tie in a gimmick with. I mean, it's it's sort of based on the fact, like the mutant figures, you know how Finn Balor, he's the demon, right? It'd be like him being released as a demon like we got with the mutant action figures or something. But this is pretty much the equivalent here. And uh, they had some crazy ones. They had Goldberg as a, you know, a construction worker, guys, because of the jackhammer. That's not even his gimmick. That's just, that's just his a play on his finishing move. So, I mean, it's pretty funny here. This is the same thing with Hitman, but, I mean, it's a little 
little bit different. They called him the Hitman, but this is his finishing move. So I think they were just reaching for straws at this point. You also had Lex Luger with the torture rack, and it came with a torture rack. And I'm not going to even lie to you. This Lex Luger figure right here has a great head scan, if you guys can see that. But these figures were were hilarious, and they're sort of, they're, they're very weird. They're crazy. And it's just so interesting to think of all the crazy action figures we used to get back in the day growing up as kids. And this one right here is really funny. And it is the Lion Tamer, Chris Jericho. Now, guys, take yourselves back here. Imagine being in a time where you don't have... There literally no Chris Jericho figure exists. And this figure comes out. It's the only Chris Jericho that is in existence. You got to buy it. And you buy it. And the only Chris Jericho you can buy comes with a little baby cute cartoon looking lion and it it comes with a chair and he's a lion tamer guys from the circus you guys know the lion tamer chris jericho the the greatest in the world he's the lion tamer chris jericho so imagine having to uh, pick up this as the only chris jericho figure on the market I had to include these ringmasters, guys. They're very hilarious, just like the Maximum Sweat figures. It's just like, what in the hell are we thinking? You know, they're all sitting in the boardroom trying to come up with ideas, and they're like, my God, Goldberg, construction worker, jackhammer. Let's give him a jackhammer. He has a jackhammer finishing move. Bam, there we go. Pump it out to the shelves. Children will love it. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about the WWE Flexum action figures you see here. Completely posable, guys. Just oversized, just ridiculous proportions on this Brock Lesnar. Actually, one of the ones that's kind of accurate, but they actually released a Rey Mysterio that was in the same style as this. You guys know, I, I, yeah, Jack Specific did make these. Jack Specific did make these. And you guys know that Jack's kind of struggled with, with the, the, the scaling process. You know, they would have like deluxe aggression Rey Mysterio figures that were as tall as the Great Khali. So that's that is one of the biggest flaws in the Jack Specific figures. Even though they released some banger figures, guys, they did have some mistakes here. But these Flexum figures, I never understood why they gave us these. I, I absolutely hated them as kids. But I've never been one, uh, I've never been a fan of gimmick, you know, gimmicky, gimmicky wrestling action figures. You know, the, the mutants, the zombies, the Ghostbusters figures that we're getting. Any Flexums like this. Um, the crazy stuff off the wall stuff, I never really got into it because I would rather have a really cool figure that was accurate that I could play around with. Like, I don't want this Flexum figure. I mean, I guess if you're like, uh, you know, you, you want to have some, some weird stuff going on, you play with your figures, you know, you have the Flexum stuff. I never was a big fan of them, just like the Flexums or the Flex Force figures we got from Mattel. Never been a big fan of these, but these are very interesting to say the least. And I remember having a Kurt Angle one of this. I had, uh, I think, I think that's the only one I had, though, is the Kurt Angle one. And I think I got it for my birthday or something because Kurt Angle was one of my favorite wrestlers. I think my mom or, or somebody got it for me as a birthday present and I never really used it. I remember having it, never using it, never playing with it because, you know, compared to other Jack specific figures like the, you know, the Deluxe Aggressions ones that we got and all the other ones that we had growing up, these, these just didn't fit in with those because they were so jacked and they were stretchy. They couldn't really stand on their own and they had a problem with that. So, I never really played with it, but I did have one, and I can tell you from experience, I mean, they're interesting, and you could have some fun with them if you tried. I just was never into it. You know, I couldn't get into it, but I wanted to include them here. They're they're very crazy, off-the-wall figures, and I want to say, now that I'm thinking about it, I may have had an RVD. I may have had RVD and Kurt Angle. They were two of my favorites, and maybe that's why I had them. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, you guys can see here what they look like. And uh, they, they were insane. They were pretty interesting. But I had to include those here. And now we're going to go into the final thing, guys. There's only one figure in this line that makes any sense at all. And I don't know how they made a whole series out of it. And it is the reason that they totally rotted on shelves. But it is the WWE Mutant figures. Yes, I had to include them. You guys can see here with Sting as a scorpion. And my God, these figures absolutely rotted on shelves. I bet you can go into any Walmart across the country, the United States of America, from Cal the Southern California to the freaking top of Maine in the top right corner of the United States of America. Every Walmart across the country probably has like six of these in their clearance rack, and that is probably not even an exaggeration, guys. Looking at these, I don't know why we got these. They're very off the wall. We had, you know, the Colossus John Cena. I guess it's because, what, he's supposed to be invincible. You can never beat him. He's like he's made of steel. He's like Superman. And then you had the Bray Wyatt who looked like a zombie slash crocodile because you guys know he's from the bayou, right? I mean, he's he's from Louisiana. He's from the swamp area. So why not just make Bray Wyatt into an alligator we had stardust as an alien and you guys know how that turned out 
I mean, my lord, the only one out of all of these that makes any sort of sense is the Finn Balor, the mutant Finn Balor, and that's because it's actually part of his gimmick, the demon gimmick, you know, and this one's actually pretty badass. I've seen some people use this for stop motion um, battle stories is one who used this for like a little short film with Finn Balor, and it's super badass when you use it like that, but it actually makes sense because he is a demon, and... Um, I don't know. I like this figure uh, with that point, but maybe Kane would have been a better one. Uh, did they even make an Undertaker mutant figure? I don't think they did. Um, the same thing goes for the zombies. Even though the zombies do look really cool, they're sculpted well, they're painted nicely and everything, I was never a fan of them. Again, the gimmicky stuff, never been a fan of it, um, uh, besides the Finn Balor one. And uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I had to include these mutants in here. The zombies are also an exception that could be plugged in here, but. I think that about does it for some of the dumbest, craziest, weirdest action figures. I really don't even know what I'm going to call this video, guys. I mean, I just wanted to cover some of the crazy figures that maybe you had never heard of before. I had to include the, the Ringmasters, and I had to include the Maximum Sweat because they're absolutely off the wall, and they're absolutely nuts, but they do exist. And I'm sure if I did some more digging, I could find some of the worst figures ever. If you guys are interested in that, please let me know down in the comment section below. But that is going to do it for today's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed but uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of, all of these figures. Do you do you hate the gimmicky stuff? Do you enjoy the zombies, mutants, and stuff? I would love to know down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.